Welcome to Stitchery Stories, where textile artists share their life in fabric and thread. Inspiration, techniques, disasters and delights. And I'm Susan Weeks, enthusiastic embroiderer and textile arts dabbler who also loves podcasting. So take a break and enjoy our light-hearted chat and please share with your friends so they can enjoy it too. Hiya, quick reminder, a really easy way to support Stitchery Stories, well, and all small businesses to be honest, is simply by sharing and talking about the thing that you like, in this case the podcast. If you spot my posts on Instagram or Facebook, perhaps you could share them to your stories. You may want to write your own post, create your own story on Instagram or Facebook about an episode and why, what you liked about it or the podcast in general. Perhaps you like blogging and uh, would like to write a blog post about Stitch With Stories podcast, favourite episodes, things that you like about it, anything like that. If you tag me, then I will always share and comment, etc. as well. So it's a win-win, isn't it? If you're in some of these large Facebook groups, then to be honest, in some of these groups, if you're the creator of something, it it can be frowned upon when you share about something, but it's okay for others to share and talk about things they've discovered. So perhaps you might want to um, make a post in one of those groups you're a member of, share about the podcast. That would be fantastic. And let's not forget about real life. Okay, we're all in groups uh, in real life and we have friends in real life. So again, Perhaps if you're in some kind of crafty group, then why not all share about which podcast that you like to listen to while you're crafting and making and stitching and and whatever it is that you're all doing. Um, I'm sure everybody would welcome that because so many people love to listen whilst they are doing things. The benefit of podcasts. So anything like that at all is really, really very gratefully received. It helps more people discover the podcast. It helps more people have something enjoyable to listen to, of course. And that's how we all grow together. Thanks ever so much. And now let's crack on with today's fabulous guest. Hello and welcome today to our lovely guest, Florian Schmidt. Hi, Florian. Hi, Sue. Nice to meet you. (laughs) It's It's lovely to be talking to you. And Florian is based in France. So she's got a really interesting story. And uh, yeah, she's somebody that we've we connected on Instagram or I can't remember. But um, and Florian is also one of those guests who we had all lined up and then I just I didn't have time to do the podcast. So she's been sitting waiting patiently for about a year now. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I think that year has been a good wait in terms of the podcast because Florian's got some really exciting news for us to share. So all been worth it, I think. Right, I've got uh, a quick bio here for Florian, and then I'll remember to do the links and then we'll crack on. So I'm Florian Schmidt, a fashion and textile designer based in France. I discovered fabric manipulations during fashion school and realised I love creating new fabric effects more than inventing clothes. So right after finishing my studies, I launched Flow Home Delight, my creative textile studio. I love to play with fabric to create interesting textures, patterns and 3D effects. I'm working with neoprene and an old technique called Canadian smocks to create different pieces for home decor and accessories. So things like cushions, plaids, key rings, bags. I'm hand making everything in my studio and offer my collection on my website, which is flowhomedelight.com. I'll I'll come on to the um, other links in a minute. And importantly, I'm very busy at the moment working on my exciting book on fabric manipulation. So the best two places to find all about Florian's work is basically through Instagram. And she's got two channels on there. One's called Flow Home Delight and the other one is her name, Florian Schmidt. So again, all of Florian's links and images will be in her episode on Stitchery Stories. Um, Right, so fabric manipulation. Haven't really had much. I think one guest was doing quite a bit. Uh, Obviously, quite a lot of my guests do manipulate fabric, not to the extent that you do. You've made it your 
special subject, haven't you, Florian? Yes, I have. I think I just tried everything I could uh, put my hands on, and then it's all kind of called fabric manipulation. It's very broad. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice broad topic and covers a lot of different things. So before we kind of get distracted with the techniques, we'll talk about that bit later on. What would you like to share with us? What are you working on, Florian? And what's got you excited? Yeah, so the big project right now, which I have been working full time since uh, March uh, this year, is uh, my first uh, book uh, around fabric manipulation. And this book is supposed to be like a Bible uh, of all the techniques that we can think of. And hopefully this will inspire and help the reader to find their own techniques, discover and learn and get inspired for their own creation, whether it's uh, someone who is working in fashion, working in um, decor or art, uh, textile arts. Um, I hope it will be like a good compilation of all the techniques uh, that I like. Right. Brilliant. So a very broad topic and wow, a book. So that's I, I don't mean to be rude, you are only young. And so quite often people, you know, it takes them a, a number of years to even think about writing a book or thinking that they've got enough to say in writing a book. And and here you are, you've graduated, you've, you know, had, had a few years creating your own brand, for example, and now here you are writing a book. So how, how did that happen? Because, you know, I'm really nosy and I like the stories. How did the book, the book project come come into life, Florian? Yeah, I know it's crazy for me too because uh, <laughs> I, I, I thought once uh, in my life, in my entire life, yeah, I think I will want to write a book. But then uh, it uh, kind of fell on me, which was really uh, amazing. Um, I was scrolling, uh, scrolling through Instagram, and actually, I'm a big uh, fan of books on fashion of on, uh, books on um, business and books on art and everything so I'm looking right now as we are recording this at my uh, collection and book my, collection uh, like, yeah yeah <laughs> which I love which is very inspiring just to see because I have them um, classed by colors which is very inspiring ah! for me <laughs> oh well you've got a, rain- a rainbow bookshelf well done yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was scrolling through Instagram and I saw a post of uh, a book uh, on fabrics and, and fashion that I didn't know of which was ah. very uh uh, weird to me because I know everything that's going out and everything because I like books so much yeah so I ask a question about this book what is this book on Instagram I've never seen it and so the the, the account answered me and then they send me a DM and they say hey we are a publishing company and we want to make a book about fabric manipulation uh, we saw your account and uh, maybe you would be interested uh, in this so what do you think so I was like yeah of course I'm, I would be so thrilled to do this uh, this project and that's how it started and yeah I know <laughs> it's crazy wow wow that that is a really interesting story and it just shows us the possibilities of Instagram to connect us around the world and to provide with opportunities that we wouldn't have seen otherwise so and I know everybody we all kind of grown at oh. Uh, keeping Instagram up to date and and all the problems that we have in just trying to get anywhere with it. And yeah, asking that kind of one question triggered all of this (laughs) opportunity. Did did you think it was um, a a spam, you know, a a, a con, something like that when they first asked? No, no, I was just so shocked. And uh, (laughs) actually, I didn't answer for the first few days because (laughs) I like, what? What? It's too crazy. It's too big of a project. I don't know. But then I say, oh, you know what? Let's uh, let's say yes, and we'll see if it goes to the end or not. I'm not sure. Maybe it's uh, as you said, not true. But yeah, yeah, I can say yes, and we'll see after what happens. And actually, it happens. I'm writing it, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is an absolutely brilliant story. I love that. Well done. So yeah, sometimes asking that one question or scrolling and going to be nosy and having or somebody did that to you didn't they you asked the question they went and checked out your profile and then they thought wow yes this person's could be really great for us brilliant yeah so the conclusion I think is that you always have to show what you're working on because that's how I got this project so don't be afraid to share your work yeah (laughs) what a good point 
what a good point because sometimes there's that oh well who who the hell's interested in a half finished mm. thing oh showing this again I haven't finished it yet you know I mean some some projects for some of the people who do the you know the really detailed hand embroidery takes weeks you know mm. and I'm sure people think oh do I need to show this again but yeah show the progression show what you're working on because people aren't mind readers are they 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 will only see what you can do by what you've posted on Instagram or or wherever. So, yeah. yeah. And even if it, they don't see everything that you do, just having this Instagram page um, updated, it's like uh, like uh, your portfolio. It's mm. really so much easier for other people to see what you're about. And so just one page showing everything that you do is like... Um, so much quicker than a website or a portfolio or and everything. So yeah, that, that's that's very true. Right. So that's that's a really great story then of how you uh, how you got the book. Great. Um, so how far on with the book are you? What where in the process are you? You're still you're writing it at the moment. Yeah. So since it's a visual book with a lot of samples that I want to show to to get the reader inspired, I have to make a lot of those samples. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the longest part because once I've made something, I just uh, I mean it's it's still work, but it's easier. I just have to write what I've just made and explain uh, how I made it. So once it's done, it's easier. So the big, big part is making all of these uh, samples uh, mm. with the different techniques on uh, uh, small samples, maybe 15 by 15 centimeters or something like that. Right. And uh, I have, in this book, I have prepared four big parts and each part is uh, regrouping different techniques that are quite similar. So the part one will be all about pleating. Yeah. So all the different types of pleats and tucks and like, um, all the variation you can think of second part would be ag- about gathering so the gathers the ruffles the shearing uh the smokes and everything like that in the second part the third part would be um about uh cutting so when you have holes when you have um i don't know how to say but just cutting and mm. now i have so many in my head i forgot <laughs> <laughs> holes i think is a good yeah. good description yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> And the last part, which I'm currently work- working on and trying to fin- finish as soon as possible, is uh, padded and uh, quilted um, uh, samples. Yeah. So not only the regular qu- quilted um, pattern, but also uh, mixing some of the previous techniques and um, uh, quilted and um, padded um, materials. So these are the four parts. I'm almost uh, done with all of the three first parts yeah and now working on the last one then after i will still have one big mission which is to take uh, a photo of (laughs) every sample so that it can be included in the book so that's also for the end the last uh, very big thing i have to work on (laughs) yeah right so you're at the very much the creative stage so um (laughs) we'll 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 come back to any kind of date we can look forward to We'll, we'll come back to that at the end so that really sounds great and those four categories four sections wow yes and i've seen you have been sharing some samples and things on your instagram account haven't you so it's it's not a secret is this book florian's been sharing some of her <laughs> ideas and so you can go and have a taste at everybody so go and go and follow what she um what she does right so before we dive into a bit more about the techniques i've got loads of questions about that um you mentioned in your story there that obviously you were going down the fashion route and then while you were doing your fashion course you then discovered that you prefer to manipulate fabric so do you want want to just explain a little bit more about that that story because I think it's interesting how you've how you've changed and how you realized while you were in your course that you didn't really fit with everybody <laughs> perhaps <laughs> uh yeah so uh when i was a child my dream was always to work in fashion and be a creative director and a stylist and be the creative uh, person yeah um and so i started all my studies uh, in this uh, direction and so uh, i did a special option in high during high school wh- which was already teaching teaching me how to 
uh, create and do uh, all uh, of different things like drawing and uh, mm -hmm. use of color and uh, yeah it's called applied art so it's yeah. very general and uh, not only to fashion but to design in general and then after I started um, two years diploma after high school uh, yeah. in Strasbourg where I came from yeah um, which was in fashion and so Uh, during this course, we were taught a special creative process in order to create fashion collections. Ah, right. This uh, creative process was very much centered uh, around fabric manipulation and yeah. trying to express actually your ideas for your collection with textiles. So right. using the right fabric and the right effect to express what you want to express uh, in your clothes. When you are a fashion designer, there are several things that you can be interested by. Maybe you express yourself more with colors, maybe more with volume or, you know, with references to older creation, maybe to try to do something completely new. And so mm -hmm. every designer has his own style. And yeah. mine actually is to work with fabric manipulation and create some small effects um, to express my, my ideas. So that's what I learned in my studies and I really liked it. Yeah. So I continued with it. Right, exactly. So, and you went to, I think when we were talking before, you went to Paris as well. So you were you carried your studies on in Paris too. And that's when you realized you didn't want to do drawing. You wanted to <laughs> work with the fabric. Yes, exactly. So this um, in Strasbourg, the, the process they, they told us, I really liked it and I discovered lots of things. And then I moved to Paris to continue my studies because, of course, Paris, there are yeah. more fashion <laughs> schools. <laughs> And uh, their process that, uh, that were taught, the process that was taught was very different. Uh, it was more about drawing and redrawing and drawing again and again the same clothes and making small changes, but uh, by right. the shape more yeah. than creating, even draping, they didn't use it that much. So I realized my favorite way of creating was experimenting materials and, and uh, volumes and uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, working with my hands is my favorite. So. That's yeah. why I discovered that. And in the end, I was happier with doing my little samples more than the final garment. So I, I guess there's something here to learn. <laughs> so it's part of education, isn't it? That's why we carry on with our studies, to discover from ourselves yeah. what it is that we want to do, not what somebody thinks we should be doing. So, yeah, that's yeah, that's that's an interesting, an interesting journey there. Now, so for your inspirations... You obviously, you've worked in, looked at fashion, and now you're into the textile manipulation. It, do you have a somebody that's been particularly inspiring that you've, you know, really looked up to while you've been on this journey of discovery? Uh, yeah. So my biggest inspiration is uh, Iris van Herpen. So she is a Dutch designer, fashion ah, designer, yeah. which uh, goes to Paris for haute couture shows. Yeah. And she's known because she's a very um, avant-garde designer. She's really working with innovative materials and inventing her own fabric manipulation techniques ah, using laser cuts nice. and 3D printing and really trying to push for, for fashion forward. Yeah. And so I had uh, seen all of her work online and I was very inspired by, by her universe uh, yeah. because she used fabric manipulation and also the style that she has with organic shapes is really something that I like um, and so I had the chance to do an internship there so in Amsterdam oh, when wow. I could see first hand yeah so I could see first first hand sorry um, all the fabrics and all the materials and I tried to learn everything that I yeah. could like how they make the stuff uh, because it was very different from traditional couture techniques So it was very inspiring to see like new techniques, actually. <laughs> yeah. So you really packed in a lot of experience and investigation and inspire, you know, inspiration. Um, what a brilliant internship that was. <laughs> That's excellent. Oh, yeah. So therefore, I can see when we look at techniques, one of the things that I, I really like is the the way you combined smocking and like neoprene and the kind of modern textiles. 
I think that's a, a really interesting, very eye catching as well. And you know, you've been making bags and r- really attractive things with the different smocking. So the techniques then. So you've t- taken a lot of these inspirations, and then you decided you were going to create your kind of home decor and accessories. So in terms of techniques, so you're, you're writing this book that's going to, as you said, the Bible of all of these techniques. <laughs> Is there kind of one that really stands out for you, Florian, your favourite? <laughs> the one I have made the most is obviously the one I'm using for my brand uh, and the technique is called Canadian smoke. Sometimes you can also find it under American smokes. Yeah. And uh, this one I have made like so many meters of it. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do it with your eyes shut? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, almost. <laughs> but it's uh, with a tiny needle and thread, so maybe it's not that easy with the eye shot, but I have made so many meters. Uh, I really like the effect because it's an old technique that was quite forgotten, or when people saw it, uh, the old image of this technique, it was not so appealing and very uh, outdated, but I was very happy to find um, a textile that looked more modern with this technique. So I used neoprene and the two combined, uh, I really like the effect because it looks very soft and very uh, comfortable as well as having a design that is geometrical. But uh, yeah, I don't like when it's, uh, I I don't use print so much. I prefer Mm. to have like a volume and 3D effects. And this technique and this material is very much the, the perfect um, link between fabric manipulation and uh, my own style with that is more um, minimal and with, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, this technique uh, with the neoprene is really uh, my style, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's so effective. Um, it's interesting that you say that the, the kind of Canadian smock is an, an old-fashioned technique, a, quite a forgotten technique, because I've only seen your samples and your examples (laughs) of it and it just looks so modern it's it's fascinating I want to poke my finger in the holes I want to touch it it, 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 (laughs) yeah you you really want to touch it I want to take those things out of the photographs and give them a good old (laughs) poke and a feel oh they're really great and the effect so it's it's very it's geometric, but very soft. It's mm-hmm. a very soft geometric, if, if such a thing can exist. Um, and you mentioned before, like an organic feel to it, even though it's something made out of neoprene. It's it's just really great. The bags, I think, are absolutely beautiful that like you've uh, you've come up with. And, and mm-hmm. then when they're in like an, or- an orange or you know, a, you know, a nice color as well, and you get the the shading from the light and the shadows, and it's <laughs> it's us. Oh, what was it used for originally? What's the old fashioned way of of the Canadian smock? How? What would they have used it for? I, I can't picture what you would have done with that old fashioned smock. Uh, so, I, as I uh, worked on the book, I actually included this technique. So I had time to research uh, the beginning. <sighs> I think the beginning was really uh, English smoking. Uh, maybe you, you know more of this yeah one. so that's you... more where we're pleating and then kind of mm-hmm. embroidering over the top that's what I understand English smocking to be yes exactly so I think this one is a variation uh, and you don't pleat before but you still uh, put the needle through at uh, specific places in yeah. order to form the pattern so it's a, a variation it's still called smoke after all and um, so in the beginning, English smoking was used on blouses for peasants, I guess. Yeah, and across the top on dresses and that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah it was very uh, utilitarian. It was um, instead of having elastic because it didn't <laughs> exist yet. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was used for. And then I I saw it on some historic dresses. Uh, I think it was more decorative then. Mm. And uh, in the 60s or 70s, uh, it was used uh, just for decoration on cushions, uh, yeah. usually with um, in either velvet or um, satin yeah. uh, fabrics. But uh, the shiny aspect of satin, I didn't really like. So this no, no. picture <laughs> that I saw of satin from the 70s, <laughs> is that I feel really is outdated. And so neoprene is matte and very soft, so I, I like the, this uh, better. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, it, that's a lot, a, a lot more of an interesting look to it, and you say much more modern and quite funny that 
they were using smocking because we didn't have elastic and kind of man-made fibers and now you've turned that on its head and you've smocked <laughs> something that is like yeah, totally man-made <laughs> and has a bit of stretch to it as well so <laughs> but I really like this idea of finding like ancient or forgotten or outdated techniques mm. and try to make it modern because when I was in fashion school I thought that every shape uh, of fabrics has already been made I mean yes. what can you invent now everything has already been the, been done so I believe innovation now more comes from um, fabrics yeah. and new fabrics and the new material that they invent and also uh, new manipulation techniques that haven't been made before so I'm really liking to explore all of this technique in my book so then I can mix it up and see what I like and what is more modern so now I have all of these samples in my studio and I can choose which one I want to work on later after this book so it's good to try everything actually <laughs> yeah it's just absolutely brilliant really great now quite often you know I'm speaking to people who've you know work on detailed hand embroidery that takes weeks or months or you know where if something's gone wrong it can be like burnt or ruined very quickly so I suppose really some of these questions might not really work with your experience so far. So um, so we'll kind of quickly rattle through some of these to see what uh, what we can come up with. So things that ne- don't really go as planned and there's been a bit of a disaster. Your whole work's all an experimentation, isn't it, Florian? <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So I have an idea in my head, then I make it with my hands and it's never <laughs> what I expected. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, sometimes uh, I have no idea, I still have to work it uh, and, and change it, uh, but sometimes I do something, it's not what I expected, but it's really good still, so that's a good surprise, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, so so the idea of a disaster doesn't work at all with you, does it? It's all a learning and a play and who knows what's going to happen? I'm not saying that I'm happy with all the experimentation. Oh, no, and, no. <laughs> but, uh, it's uh, usually cool because you, when you experiment fabric manipulation, you you can never guess in your head what the result will be like, <laughs> and it's it's uh, only when you do it that you can find something new. Um, it's uh, when I was saying in fashion school, they want us to draw everything, but here I cannot draw my fabric manipulation before. <laughs> you have to do it to see what it does. Otherwise, ah, you can't right. know. Yeah, so yeah. It, it's really experimentation because you cannot guess it and, and think it. You have to do it. <laughs> you have to do it. That's I love that. You can't guess it. You can't think it. You have to do it. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> so the high point, I guess, so far has been that one question that you asked that publisher and you finished up with the book is there other other things that you want to you know anything anything else marvelous happened so far (laughs) yeah I have a wonderful life I'm only uh, 27 but I have lived so many cool (laughs) things no just kidding Um, I uh, (laughs) I know it's really crazy to have this project uh, so early on and I'm very happy because it's uh, it makes me experiment everything and now I'm I was in fashion and now I'm maybe more interested in textile art. So mm. I have so many more things to discover. Like uh, I know yeah. a lot of things in fashion and now I feel like a new world is opening yeah. up with all the arts and textile art. So I have always more to learn. So it's really cool. Oh, that's, that's absolutely fantastic. And then I suppose one of the other questions, unfinished objects. I can't imagine you having any because yours are, <laughs> you, you do it, you put, put it, try it and see what happens. <laughs> Uh, I think like everyone, I have in the in the back of my studio like um, a cut pattern of a jacket I wanted to make, but I haven't made it. But that's you know, it's okay. It's been there here I think for three years, but uh, I don't know if I will make it one day. But it's here, and I just have this list of all the projects I want to do that I haven't done yet. But I think everyone creative is like that, right? <laughs> yeah, we all have. In fact. I don't know about you, but mine just kind of buzz around in my head annoyingly. Sometimes I can make them go away and other times. <laughs> it's like, particularly when I've got other things that I have to do, it's like this this, this, this thing yeah. buzzes away in your head, doesn't it? So, oh I have to write it down so it doesn't <laughs> annoy me and I can concentrate on the book. Yeah, Otherwise, good, I can't that's, work. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah, and you keep coming back to focusing on the book, which is absolutely great. So in terms of creative time, well, at the moment, it's all creative time, isn't it, Floria? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. So 
I'm working full time on this book since uh, March. Right. Um, but uh, as I was telling you, it, it's quite frustrating because we are used to working a lot of hours in the day. Maybe if you're doing like more admin work when you are when I'm working on the brand and I have various projects, or maybe if I'm selling through a, a market, mm. I'm working a lot of hours in the day. But um, I don't know if uh, your listeners have experienced that when you're working on creative on something creative, you cannot be creative for 12 hours straight. It doesn't work <laughs> yeah, like that. So true. <laughs> so maybe I can uh, do Canadian smoke for a long period of time. Uh, maybe uh, eight hours, okay. Yeah. But for the creative stuff, I need to use my hands and my brain. Now it's uh, maybe five hours a day. It's the maximum I can do. After my, my brain doesn't work, I don't have any more ideas. So it's frustrating because I want to do more because I'm actually almost late for this <laughs> book. I must finish right now. <laughs> it's difficult to be creative 12 hours a day, even though yeah. you would like to because you need <laughs> yeah. to get on with the book. Yeah. And after a while, we can't sit down anymore and our fingers hurt as well. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah true. <laughs> yes. So is there any technique or anything that you do as a hobby? When I'm not working, I read books. Right. I love books. So... <laughs> That's what I do to realize. Yeah, and you organize them all in colors as well. Yes, yes, very organized. Mine, mine are organized in layers of dust. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, let's not go on with the dust. Right, okay. So, Florian, absolutely fascinating speech to you about bringing these techniques alive, I think, really, and giving them such a fresh view a fresh perspective on on all of these techniques um, i really really enjoyed talking to you about that and yeah i really do like scrolling through your instagram profile as well so everybody just please go and have a look because you'll be amazed at what florian's been creating um so then just to kind of wrap up florian future plans and projects well I know you've already said you need to get this book <laughs> book done yeah. so uh, I yeah. think everyone understood that yeah <laughs> uh, after my plan is to do uh, a few workshops uh, in my former school yeah I've been um, going there a few times a year to teach uh, all kinds of uh, techniques all uh, right lovely yeah so uh, I've done a workshop on obviously Canadian smokes yeah on uh, pleating uh, a lot of different things so I'm going back in October and then I will take a big, huge vacation, and then Yay. I don't know what I do. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, well, the thing is, the huge vacation is going to give your brain a chance to catch up with itself, really, yes, I suppose. Sure. And yeah, and, and I, I know whenever I'm doing anything that it's when I'm not thinking about the thing I'm supposed to be thinking about that I actually, an idea kind of like, it doesn't even pop into my head. All of a sudden, it's there, and I'm thinking about it. And where did where did that idea come from? Yeah, so sure. yeah, <laughs> I can feel now that I'm using all my creative juice, and after that, I will need to re recharge, refill, <sighs> whatever. Think about nothing, and then yeah. it will come back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, have you got any plans for this uh, big holiday? Are you just taking time off at home? Are you going traveling anywhere? I'm hopefully going to travel to Thailand, but we'll see if this happens. But yeah, I will need to see something else than my office to recharge properly. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Oh, Thailand's lovely. I've been to a few places and yeah, really, really nice place to recharge. <laughs> and also so inspiring in terms of colours and patterns and just everything. It's a very, you know, very visual place as well. So yeah, oh, you'll enjoy that. Right. Well, thank you so much, Florian. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Uh, I'm glad we finally got round to it. And I think really what I can say to everybody is let's just keep our eyes open for when this book will um, appear on the shelves. Do we have any kind of, I know you're still creating it, do we have a publication date, Florian? Yeah, so thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, it's supposed to be going out in September next year, so 2023. Yeah. Because it takes a long time to mm. do all the different steps after me. Yes. And I hope, yeah, it will go out in one year. Yeah, because then uh, just we were just talking that you're writing it in French and then it's going to be translated... In English, yes. 
and also in Spanish because the publishing company is Spanish, so it will be <laughs> all three languages. <laughs> oh, right. So that's added another layer of comp- complication to it then with the Spanish yeah. publisher as well. So. <laughs> Oh, but it's the magic of Instagram, you remember? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, hats off to you, chapeau, uh, Florian, <laughs> because it's just really, really interesting what you're doing. And yeah, so looking forward to uh, seeing what other samples you come up with and what the finished book's going to be like. So I think it's going to be very, very inspiring because it's the sort of thing that I like playing around with, you know. Um, and, and it's things that you can pick up and just have a, a half an hour or something, as you say, with a, a play, really, rather than a design or a how, you know, how is this going to work? Don't know. So I'm yeah. really looking forward to seeing <laughs> that, seeing all of the techniques and, and having a try myself. So Yeah, me too. I'm really forward to seeing it finished and printed and done. But... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be yeah, such an achievement. You. Thank you so much, Faya, and it's been absolutely brilliant speaking to you. Thank you so much for having me, and I hope you will like all the posts. I'm trying to show you on Instagram what I'm doing, what I'm working on with reels and videos and everything, so I hope you like it. Yeah, we'll all follow and follow and like it as well. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me and for uh, chatting with me on creativity. It's really cool. Oh, thank you, Florian. If you enjoyed this episode and want to hear more, then please join the Stitchery Stories fan club so you can get an email when a new episode is released. It's a quick and easy way of listening and of keeping up with any news and information around this podcast. Please visit stitcherystories.com. Of course, you can listen to Stitchery Stories on plenty of podcast apps at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify and plenty more besides. You can also ask your smart speaker to play Stitchery Stories podcast too. But wherever you listen, why not leave us a rating and a review to encourage other people to listen too? I very much appreciate you taking the time to do that for me. So that is the end of our Stitchery Story for today. Keep stitching, keep smiling and keep creating your very own Stitchery Stories.